What are you ready to do for an intro? I don't know. I'm trying to think of it. I don't really have a good, clever one today. We should do like a superhero intro, like, I don't know. Like busting through the door superhero? Yeah, something like that. I left my cape at home, so we can't do that. I mean, like, what kind of shirt do you have on? Oh. You could be... Captain Otter Pops. Close enough. Welcome to Questions Over Coffee. First question today comes from Mark over email. Love the email you guys sent yesterday. I want to learn some more about navigation, but I'm wondering where you'd recommend practicing. Just didn't want to catch any funny looks walking around with a map at a park. You probably already catch funny looks even without a map. I know I do, so might as well have a map in your hand. Then you look like a tourist. Either way, I think that learning some core or practicing some core basics at a park or something like that is a great idea. Um, Personally, I don't think you need anything more than 340 feet of paracord. <laughs> I'm kidding. You really do need a pace line though because this is something I made a long, long time ago. So really it's like 322, 320, 50, 328. You sure? Yeah. 340 is the number if you want six feet of cord on either side and obviously I suck at math so I can't do that in my head. So 328 feet plus six feet on either side because you need to be able to tie off the line somewhere. So it's a good idea to leave yourself some slack. So you'll have to find a spool of paracord that's a continuous run because you don't want any breaks in the paracord. Um, paracord is probably the easiest thing to find. Um, I found a bunch of orange cordage which is even better uh, because it stands out when you're stringing it across 100 meters. So uh, what I like to do too is have some kind of reel because it is a pain in the butt to wind up all that after you're done too. So what you want to do is just start out on either your right or your left foot and you don't count until the other foot hits the ground. So meaning I would start off on my right foot and it wouldn't be until my left hits the ground that I would say one. So you want to walk that pace line at least there and going back and you average the two numbers together and what you get is your pace for 100 meters. So the reason that's important is because you can use something like pace count beads to keep track of that. So every time you hit that 100 meters or hit that number of paces in your head, it allows you to pull down one bead. And then once you get to nine beads down, you pull down one from the top and that signifies that you're ready to reset the stack and go again. So as you can see, the pace count beads allow you to keep track of a lot of paces. So that's important because you need to calculate distance walked uh, on occasion depending on how you're navigating. So we have a land navigation starter pack. It comes with everything you need to build your own pace count beads as well as all the information to learn about everything I'm talking about with pace count and uh, how to use a, a protractor like this. So the core of my navigation kit, if you will, is something like this sitting on a shelf because I don't need this all the time. Um, pace count is a good thing to get not only when you're out in the field on a flat surface, but it's great to throw it up a hill. So you have to get a incline and a decline to find out your pace for those too. So that may constitute walking that a couple of times just to average out the incline twice and the decline twice. So you really want to know your pace count and have a solid fundamental number in your head that you, you can count. So obviously it's going to be different going up or downhill. However, it's not going to be too different. You just kind of need to do that little estimation in your head as you're traversing different terrain. So it's always a good idea to have that. So I carry a pace count beads. I carry a little protractor. And we have an article that says exactly how to do this with a little gut of a paracord. But I use this to pull a bearing um, when I'm plotting on my map. And then I keep a map in a lock sack bag, um, depending on where I have it. Um, and we have an article on how to fold the map correctly because that really does make a difference. You want to be able to fold that into the right configuration. And then I carry a little right in the rain notebook so that if I need to make notes, I can either make them in the notebook or more preferably on the map. If you're going to do anything that has to do with coordinates, just write them on the map. That way you know you always have that with you and you're not flipping through a notebook. So you're more than likely going to be working a specific area of that topographic map anyway. So it's not going to hurt you to just put that in a, in a margin or something like that. 
just a little tip. Um, I like these Staedtler pens or pencils that is. Um, not only is the lead very nice and it's not non-breakable, but it's very sturdy. Uh, the, ta the cap actually doubles as a sharpener too. So, and then I carry a little supplemental eraser around if I need to erase with. Um, but I don't like writing in pen anywhere around maps because I like to keep it with pencil because I always make mistakes, um, especially when I try to do math. So then I carry a Sunto compass. I prefer the little MC2 global compass because I know that wherever I go, I only have to have one compass. You just need to learn the declination in the area you're at. So I like to put the declination into the compass. A lot of people like to just factor that when they're doing calculations. I just like to know that it's there. It gives me one less thing to think about. Again, goes back to that math thing, uh, and I don't like math. So that's kind of what I carry. Um, these things, in addition to learning through something like our articles, we have an ebook on how to learn navigation, but I highly recommend the MGRS system. And even though it is a military grid reference system, just discount the word military because it's a far superior way to navigate. It allows you to use a, a grid system um, to get wherever you're going and it allows easy identification and it allows you to easily pass coordinates back and forth. All right, next question comes from Rubicon V. Stands for five maybe. Looks like you fill your coffee carafe with water from the bathroom. Duh, where are you supposed to fill it from? I bet your grandfather filled his coffee cup from the river. Man up. Next question. How often do you find yourself changing out items in your EDC? Is there a timeline for how often you review how everything is working? There's not a specific timeline, like I don't have a reminder that tells me evaluate EDC kit. However, I like to always be thinking about that. So I'm always trying to reduce, reduce, reduce. So if I can get away with having a smaller something or another or carrying less, but still being able to fulfill what I feel is needed on a regular basis, then I'm gonna do it. So. Um, you know, I, so keys, um, screw pop tool. I think this is one of the smallest options for carrying a little utility blade out there. And again, I carry this because I like to use this to open boxes rather than my knife. Cause I like to save my knife blade. I don't like to sharpen it. So if there is a defensive need for my knife, I can use it for that and I don't have to worry about sharpening it. I can just pop in a new blade and that's what I use on a regular basis. So it just seems silly to me. A lot of people say, well, just sharpen your knife. I get it. I know how to sharpen a knife. I just don't need the practice. I can just have a little two cent utility blade and open multiple boxes all the time and not have to worry about it. But things like that that I come across that if I find a smaller version of that or there's a better way to do that with a utility blade, that's how I do it. Um, I used to carry a small pen light flashlight and then I learned that hey you can use your light for defensive purposes you know it's a great get off get off access with that blast from a flashlight in a defensive scenario so there's things like that that I've picked up and learned along the way that I'm just continually evaluating so hopefully you're doing the same all right next is from Chris M over Facebook what's your opinion on the Android team awareness kit there isn't enough of it info online so I had to look this up I didn't know what this was uh, Rob and I were talking about it, and I mentioned that this is actually something a team guy buddy of mine was saying uh, probably six years ago now, is that there wasn't a really good way to get accountability when they were on an op because, you know, there's obviously head count. You always make sure you have accountability. But however, having something electronic that could give you a indication that your guys were with you or where they were at is would be a huge, a huge thing to have in the field. So... I was excited to see that this is out there now. So this is available to law enforcement, military. This really isn't a civilian application, but however, I was kind of trying to tie it into civilian applications and you know, the tile kind of does something like that. The, the general area of, of where that can span to is very limited, but however, it's kind of the same premise. So you know, each of your guys has a, a tracking unit on them and it relays their positional data to an Android and most likely you've seen military guys that have a little Android here in their admin area on their chest rig now. So they can use that app to actually get accountability. So it's kind of a, a blue force tracker, if you will. Um, it allows you to see the positions of your other guys, but it's also kind of a red force tracker too. Um, apparently you can input the enemy into that too. So I don't really know how that works completely and I probably don't need to but that's kind of what's out there for technology. So it's really cool to see that that's being implemented. However, 
I'd highly advocate that if guys are running around with Android phones, that they should only install important apps and not be checking Tinder before they hit a house. Thanks for watching Questions Over Coffee. Remember, if you have a question, use the pound tag gear tasting on any social media network. Had to make sure I was drinking the right coffee cup. Thanks for watching, and please share the video if you can. It kind of helps us with the YouTube algorithm, whatever is going on right now, and people are not watching videos, but they are watching, and share it. Thanks. Thank you.